So in today's uh, information session, we're going to spend a little time um, introducing you to the team so you kind of know who um, supports the program and who you can turn to when you have questions. We're going to talk a little bit about the industry, um, what it's like to work in the project management field right now. I know that's particularly important for those of you who are job changers, career changers. I'm going to give a program overview of what our certificate program um, is like here at UC Davis, show you a little bit about the online um, uh, software and how we present the program. We're going to talk a little bit about options, um, support after you finish the program, and then we're going to hear from an instructor. Um, and all of our instructors are working professionals in the field. And so he'll talk a little bit about what he looks for um, from his students in his classes, but also a little bit what he looks for when he's hiring new project managers and what the field is like. So we'll go ahead and get started. So the most important person I want to introduce you to at this stage in your journey is Kathy Zhao. Kathy is our enrollment coach for the um, program, and she can answer any questions you have about the program, the requirements, how to enroll, how much it costs, how to pay for it. And so I've put up her phone number and the email, but also I've put up her Calendly link. Um, Kathy, if you want to book a session with her, she will do 15-minute um, consulting sessions with you to really talk with you about whether this is the right program for you, whether this is the right time for you to do the program, and if so, how to go about getting enrolled. I also wanna um, introduce our instructors. So as I mentioned, our instructors are unique and that they're all working professionals in the program or in the, in the actual real world. So they all work as project managers, business analysts, management consultants, um, or other, other roles, but they're all trained, they're all PMP certified, and so they really bring that wealth of knowledge to the classroom. And they're going to bring that also to the um, case studies and the artifact exhibits and really help walk you through it from a real world perspective. We're very sensitive here at continuing and professional education that um, you're just not looking for the academic aspect of the discipline. You really wanna know how it's gonna be applied in the real world so that you can use it in your career. So for those of you who are kind of new to the um, field, sometimes people ask me, well, wh what is a project manager going to do? What is expected of a project manager? And basically, a project manager, think of yourself as a change agent. You're going to be helping to implement some kind of change in your organization. So you have to be you know, comfortable with complexity and um, with dynamic environments. Projects are forever changing. For those of you who have done projects at work or even projects at home, you know what it's like and that it's very hard to follow budget, schedule, um, everyone's deliverables and, and requirements. And so you have to be comfortable. You have to have people skills. You can't come into this field thinking, oh, I just want to work behind the scenes. You're going, your big part of your job is persuading and negotiating with other people. Um, you're gonna, we're, what we provide is a toolkit of techniques and then you're gonna want to dip into those as you work as a project manager to use those to get the job done and to overcome the obstacles that are inevitable. And so Tony will talk a little bit about this later, but there are also kind of cousin fields to project management, such as uh, program managers, portfolio managers. A lot of organizations have project management offices. So you might be working on a team. And so we'll talk a little bit about the many, many ways that project managers are needed throughout all kinds of industries. So one thing that's exciting right now is there's a very high demand for project managers. It's a growing profession. Um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics is constantly publishing um, reports about how we're needing more and more project managers. And so we're gonna need more people trained, more people entering the field and more people advancing in the field. So this is a really great time to be looking into a profession such as this one. So I want to do a quick poll because I always like to know where you're all coming from. So Bridget's going to put a poll up on the screen, and I just want to know a little bit about your current level of experience as a project manager. like just about everyone's responded. So it looks like about almost 40% of you are not project managers yet, but you want to get into the field. That's fantastic. 
And about 62% of you have some experience managing projects, but no formal training. Great. One thing we always like to make clear about um, our program is that it's really you don't need to have any experience coming in. It's really meant for everyone. It's meant for people who are career changers, new to the field. And it's also meant for people who have some experience and maybe they just need to formalize it or they have their eyes on a promotion. And so they want to get a little more experience and legitimacy so that they know what they have to do at the next level. Um, you, you don't need to have anything coming in. The only thing we do sometimes recommend is that you do have a basic familiarity with business. We are going to kind of hit the ground running in that regard. We're going to be using some business terminologies. So it, you definitely want, you know, to have some experience under your belt working in the business world or with organizations and institutions. So you understand how the different elements interact and understand some of the nomenclature. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about our certificate program in particular. So there's a lot of options out there, and I realize that. And so we've tried to design our program to be as flexible as possible. So we are an approved training provider with PMI. That's the Project Management Institute. So for some of you who work in the field of project management or maybe have no project managers, you know the significance of PMI. They're really the dominant association in the field. And they're also the organization that runs the professional um, the project management professional exam, the PMP, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, we have all our course materials online. The courses are completely online and they are asynchronous. And what that means from our standpoint is that everything you need will be online. And while there may be optional live office hours over Zoom or some um, additional lecture times over Zoom, they're not required. We really want this program to be accessible to anyone all over the world no matter what your schedule is, that you can come into the class and get the work done on your own schedule. You will have weekly assignments and due dates, but whether you're doing your work at three in the morning or three in the afternoon is up to you. We wanna give you all the tools you need. And like I said, more and more, we've been augmenting the online curriculum with live Zoom sessions, but we always record those. So if you can't make the session, you can come and watch it later. You're gonna have an actual instructor. This isn't a canned program. So as I mentioned, each class has a live instructor. They are very intimate with the material. They're working as a project manager. And so they'll be the ones grading your assignments, giving you feedback and available to talk with you if you do have questions or you're struggling along the way. One thing we added to this program um, a few years ago was we had students who were saying to us, you know, I'm a career changer and I'm taking your program, but when I go to a job interview, people say, well, what's your experience managing a project? And I have to say, well, I don't have any experience. I'm trying to get experience to get a job. So one thing we added to our six courses is an artifact. And it's a case study that follows you through all six courses in the program. And so when you finish our program, you are in a position to say, well, you know, maybe I haven't worked in the field myself, but I have worked on a project and I've taken it through the procurement stage, the budgeting stage, the risk analysis stage. And I've seen it, you know, heralded it through all those stages. And I know the full breadth of a project. And so that's been really helpful. And we've gotten good feedback from students on that. And then, as I mentioned, it is an academic program. So you do earn college credit and you also um, earn professional development units for those of you who need that for your work or for other certifications. So to talk a little more specifically about the courses in the program. So the program is made up of six classes. Now, obviously our design and our goal is that you would take all six classes and earn a project management certificate. However, we realize that that's not always what people are looking for. So we do allow people to take courses individually. Um, foundations of successful project management is the prerequisite. So you would always wanna start with that course, but say after that, you're like, you know, I've been working in the field a really long time. I just wanna brush up on procurement or I really wanna learn more about risk. You could just take classes a la carte, that is allowed. Um, but like I said, the real benefit in the program is to take the classes as a whole and earn the certificate. And so we do offer two pathways to earning the certificate because we realize people have different lifestyles. So the first most traditional path is what we call at your own place at pace. And that's flexibility to create your own course schedule. So you'd always start with foundations, but what you take after that, there's some flexibility. We kind of recommend people end with risk but what you take in between is up to you. So you can do it 
um, in response to the schedule and how our course offerings schedule meshes with your lifestyle. And with that path, you pay um, each course when you enroll. So be $1,100 each time you take the class, a class, and then you would um, pay $125 certificate fee along the way so that you would earn the certificate at the end. Now in that format, you have five years to complete all your classes. So it's a lot more flexible. If you take two classes and then you need to take a year break, that's fine. You're not out any money or anything because you're just paying as you go. The other approach is something we call the fast track. And that's for people who know they want to do the certificate program and they want to get it done as quickly as possible. And so in that approach, you pay up front, you get a significant discount, you get 15% off the entire program, and we waive the certificate fee. So it's the best savings you're going to get. And you're assigned a set course plan. So if you were to start in the summer, you would take up to two classes every quarter and be done in under a year. So a lot of people find that very appealing. You also get priority enrollment, um, and we take care of all the course planning for you. So you don't have to worry about what have I taken, what do I need to take, we design a schedule based on the most optimum way to proceed course to course and you're done. The thing to remember with that approach is that you could be, you most likely are taking two classes a term. And the classes, um, you're gonna wanna devote about eight to 10 hours a week to the classes, sometimes more for classes that are more credit units. So if you're taking two classes at a time, that's almost 20 hours a week of coursework. Totally doable, most of our students work full time, who do the fast track and they do great. But it's something to think about. If you have an unpredictable schedule or you don't think you can devote that much time, you really may wanna think about the at, you, at your own pace approach. That may better suit your lifestyle. So in regard to financing your education, we do um, offer some programs for loans and training funds. And I put the phone number up there of our special funding counselor. And she's the person to talk to about um, the best way to finance your education, because we realize that, um, you know, it is a big investment and you want to uh, be able to get the most out of it and you want to make sure that you can complete it in a timely manner. So I highly encourage people and also on our website, um, we have a wonderful resource called financing your education under the student services um, tab. And that's something you probably want to check out as well. So as I mentioned, um, each course is going to go about 10 to 12 weeks, depending on how many credit units it is. And we're on the quarter system. So we have a, a offering every season. So we have one coming up this summer and then fall, winter, spring. So if you miss a quarter, it's not a big deal. The foundations course is offered every quarter. And so you can join in anytime. Most courses have about 10 modules or lessons per. So um, you'll be covering it over the course of the 10 to 12 weeks. And there's a lot of flexibility with how you complete the course, but we do have deadlines because we find that it's just the best way to keep people organized and make sure they're learning um, sequentially. And as I mentioned, you're going to want to plan on spending about eight hours per class. In my experience, the majority of people who are not successful in the program, it has nothing to do with their ability. It's really about time management. And so if you approach this like another job and you know that each week, I know I've done the program and I devoted every Saturday morning and I would just do my readings, my assignments, maybe study for my exams or work on my submissions. If you commit that block of time, you're generally going to be fine. And we understand you have work commitments, you have travel. That's fine. Just work with your instructor. They can open up um, assignments early for you so you can work ahead. If heaven forbid you miss a deadline, it's really just important to stay in communication with them and they just want to make sure you're successful. We always like to tell people, we have a lot of flexibility to help you out and make exceptions during the quarter. Once the course ends and grades are frozen and finalized, there's nothing we can do. So I always feel terrible when a student comes to me after the course has ended and said, oh, I, I got behind, what can I do? And unfortunately at that point, our hands are tied. So I can't say enough, um, try to stay on top of it and definitely stay in touch with our team and your instructor. So summer quarter classes begin on June 27th. All the classes begin on the same day. And this summer we're offering three classes. As I mentioned, foundations is offered every quarter. And then we're offering um, mastering time and cost management and navigating project procurement. So those are courses um, people sometimes will take. You, even if you're doing at your own pace, you could decide to double up. 
and you could take two courses or just one course this summer. And we will be enrolling for those classes all the way up to the first week that class starts. So um, it's important, you know, to get in early. There's some early bird discounts and such, but we understand sometimes you can't commit that early. You can join the class, you know, even the first week it starts. It's just your responsibility to catch up. And then, as I mentioned, we do offer the fast track. And so if you were to do the summer fast track program, um, oops, sorry, there's a typo there. Uh, in the summer, you would take the foundations course, of course, alongside project procurement. Then in the fall, you would take two more classes. In the winter, you would take time and cost, and then you would finish up in the spring um, with project risk and integration. So you would finish in just under a year. All right, so I've thrown a lot of information at you, talked about a lot of options and ways you can do the program. I just wanna pause for a minute and um, find out how you think you might wanna take the program and what sounds most appealing to you. And if anyone has any questions as we go along, please feel free to enter them in the Q&A box. And um, even though I might cover them at the end, uh, Kathy and Bridget can answer them along the way as well. Give everyone a second. All right, looks like a real mix, which is great. So about 20% of you want to tackle the entire certificate program, but need to do it on your own. That's fine. And then about half of you find the fast track really appealing. And I, I can understand that. You just want to dive in, get it done, get your certificate, get the savings. That makes sense. Um, another 20% say they just want to start with one class. And that's, that's great too. You start with foundation, see if it's the right path for you. And then you have five years to finish up. And then about 10% of you are still investigating and trying to learn more of what it's about. And that's what we're here for. And at the end of the session, we'll do a Q&A. So you'll get to um, ask any questions you have and learn um, any additional information you have. So, okay, so someone has a question I just want to ha handle here. Um, they're asking, if I don't have any project management experience, but I'm not up for the fast track, is there a recommended order of classes? Absolutely. And that's something that Kathy and Bridget can help you with. And what we would do is, um, it's kind of the secret is you would follow the courses in the way they're ordered by number. So, um, but you would start with foundations and then you would proceed to the team's class. And then you would go on to time and cost. You would go on to quality and procurement, finishing up with risk. Really, the most important thing is to start with foundations and to end with risk. The other classes in the middle are topics that stand alone, but that is kind of, you know, if you had complete open schedule, that's the order that kind of they they're, were designed in. So I wanna take a moment just to show you a little bit about um, our online classes. So we use Canvas, which is a learning management system. It's quite common now, very intuitive. Um, really easy to learn. Students really like it. And it's really just designed nicely in that it lays out your entire quarter. You've got um, the course welcome page where everything is organized. You've got um, ways that many ways you can drill down. Like I tend to like to work in the module view because that shows me all my assignments and all the content just going, you know, one through module one through 10. The modules will open up weekly, but you can also, they'll be grayed out, but you can see them so that you can know, oh, okay, in module 10, I'm gonna have a final exam. So it's like, we don't keep anything a secret. We just open them up week by week so people don't get overwhelmed about where they are or what they're working on at that moment. Um, and we're pretty flexible if someone says, oh, I really need access in advance, that's fine. So we've had really good experience with the Canvas um, learning management system. And it also has a built-in email system, so you can contact your instructor, and a calendar, which shows all your assignments and deliverables. So if you're taking more than one class, you can clearly see what you need to do. So a lot of people ask us about the professional um, exams, because the association is a very large presence in the international world of project management. So what we, we always say is that project management certification exam is separate than the academic certificate that UC Davis offers, but they do work together. 
by taking our certificate program, you are in a very good position to have the knowledge you need to sit for the exam, but they are separate. So I always encourage people to visit the PMI website to learn more because to even be eligible to sit for the PMP exam, you need to have not only education hours and classes, but you need to have thousands of hours of hands-on experience leading projects and they will audit people. So um, you'll wanna look at their page. The not, amount of experience varies by how much, if you have an undergraduate degree, an associate's degree, a graduate degree. So it's very complex. So I don't wanna go into it all here, but I would definitely say our program definitely assists you if you're planning on sitting for the PMP exam, but I wouldn't characterize it as test prep. Um, if you are serious about sitting for the exam with PMI at any time, I recommend probably doing um, a test prep class, just like you would for SAT or anything else, just to kind of learn how the exam is laid out and what you need to know. So we also offer some um, career placement services. We have a partnership with Tech Systems. And so for people who go through our program, we uh, have a special email at Tech Systems we give out, and that's basically a job placement firm. And they will um, ask you to send a resume and a cover letter to let them know what area you're interested in being a project manager in, and then they'll help find you a position. I will say Tech Systems tends to focus primarily on the IT sector, so it's not complete, but um, it is a great way to learn about what jobs are out there and what options you have when you finish. I also always encourage students to become members of the local PMI chapter. Um, and also by becoming a member of the local chapter, you, you wanna become a member of PMI International. It's not that expensive. If you're doing the courses at your own pace, PMI members get 10% off. So it's a really great discount. And I mentioned that because a lot of people will start our program and think, oh, I'm getting ready to transition to the work world, I'll join PMI. I highly recommend joining PMI now claiming that discount over the six classes, it more than pays for the membership. And then while you're a member, oh my goodness, they do workshops, networking events, um, webinars, all kinds of resources on their website. In fact, right now they're offering a free webinar to kind of encourage people to become members about the project management job scene. So it's a really great organization. Um, and if you do wanna sit for the PMP, you're gonna to wanna to become a member anyway. So there's a lot of reasons to join and it's a great way to help network and learn about more jobs. All right, one last poll. I am curious of how many of you are interested in sitting for the PMP exam. So we'll go ahead and put that poll up there. So and it's no problem if you're not. Not everyone needs the certification. Not everyone's even aware of it. I talk to um, hiring managers who say, oh, I don't care about that. But other times you'll see job postings where they specifically mention it. So, you know, it's something that it's really, I see it as a sign of mastery in the profession. It's not something you would do as an, an entry-level employee, but as you get established in the project management world, it, it does advance your career. All right, so it looks like about half of you are maybe, and about half of you are like, yeah, I definitely want to consider the PMP. So that's great. And your instructors are a great resource for that. They're all PMP certified, and they can talk to you about their experience when they sat for the exam. They recently updated the exam dramatically last year. And so it's really important that you make sure you have all the up-to-date information. All right. So at this point, I would like to turn over the info session to one of our instructors, Tony Oliver. Um, Tony has taught with us for many years. He's been instructor of the year. Right now he's teaching on um, foundations of successful project management, as well as the kind of capstone course, which is managing project risk integration. So um, welcome, Tony. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. So Tony, I have a couple questions. I'd love for you to spend a second talking about your background and how you got into project management. So I think it's really important for people to know there's not one path. And then to talk a little bit about what your courses cover and kind of what you expect from students when they do the program. <clears throat> Absolutely. So project management is in many ways the accidental profession. 
And by that, I mean that us project managers didn't really set out saying, oh, I want to be a PM when other kids were saying, oh, I want to be a firefighter or I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. This is one of those things that uh, sometimes a profession calls to you. Sometimes you kind of discover all along that you've been a project manager. So my particular voyage, um, when I first graduated from college, I worked as a consultant for a company. And then I took a role as a project manager with Cisco Systems. And it was an amazing amount of responsibility, an amazing amount of uh, complexity, honestly, for somebody my age. So I took the opportunity to ask my peers at the time, my colleagues, hey, how, how did you know about project management? And they advised a handful of things, one of which was taking a look at the standards and the, the best known practices. So that led me itself to um, PMI and to the project management body of knowledge, which is one of the bases uh, on which we have uh, developed our courses. I then kept that in my mind. I continued that work <clears throat> a couple of years, um, for a couple of years. Then I went to graduate school. And upon finishing graduate school, where I took a project management class, I ended up pursuing my certification. And that's been 17 years ago. So for the last 17 years, I've been uh, certified as a project manager. Not all of my roles during those 17 years have been as a project manager. That's something that I want to highlight. We all work in projects. Projects have one project manager, but they have many people working in project management. So it's not as much, one of the things that I tell my students is, it's not as much about being the project manager, but it's about understanding project management and how the role that you might have in the project is going to contribute to the overall benefit of the project and the organization that you're working with. Thanks, Tony. And then the last thing I wanted you to talk a little bit about since you've been in the profession for so long is what you look for when you're hiring project managers and what you think are skills that people really want to highlight when they're looking to get into the profession and be successful. Mm -hmm. So in no particular order, I would say one is attention to detail. There's a lot of elements in project management that really the hinge on the proper movement of information, the proper movement of communicate, well, the proper communication of information, I should say. And for that, you have to be aware of all the components that together make up the project. And you can look at it from a couple different lenses. One is, what do we want to do? Why is the project happening? What is the end goal? Because ultimately, it's not about running a project for the sake of running a project, but rather running a project because there's a need for to create value. But secondly, being aware of how, like a Rubik's Cube, all of the different elements of project management intersect and uh, affect each other. And that's how we have designed the courses. As Michelle mentioned, there's the beginning class. I'm one of the two instructors, and I, it's the fundamentals, foundations. And then we have five other courses, each of which covers two of those areas that make up the Rubik's Cube. Ultimately, being aware that things don't just happen in isolation and that an action taken, a decision taken, um, an assumption not verified will have massive repercussions on the project unless you go really out of your way and communicate it and uh, debate it and talk about it. And the second thing, uh, well, the second or third thing would be intellectual curiosity. So to me, a project manager is always eager to learn more, always eager to find a better mousetrap, always eager to learn about how things connect both outside the project and inside the project. And that's because projects don't just operate in the silo. There's a lot of things that are happening within the organization, within the industry, within the entire scope um, regarding perhaps your, your competitors and your customers that are important for you to keep in mind. A project sometimes brings about a product that met a need or fulfilled the need that was present at the time. Sometimes those needs change and us as project managers need to be aware of that. Thanks, that's helpful. You know, I just realized since about half the people on this call are interested in eventually sending for their PMP exam, any comments you have about the recent changes and things that you advise people um, when they ask you about sending for the exam in the current version? Yeah, first and foremost, if you haven't taken a standardized test in a while, 
be sure to learn about the guidelines. So PMI offers two type, offers two ways to take the test. One is at, in the comfort of your own home. I didn't take it that way. That wasn't available when I was uh, taking my test. But essentially, that requires a stable internet connection. That requires a camera. So there's a proctor who can monitor you during the entire four hours. The other one is actually go to a testing center. And of course, in days of COVID, you may have some um, uh, you may have some concerns about doing that. So keep that in mind. By the time that you're eligible for the the, uh, the, the test, the certification, hopefully, COVID will be a memory. That being said, it's important to note that we teach, we here at EC Davis, we teach project management as um, a discipline. We teach project management as a science and yes, even an art. And even though we base it on the project management body of knowledge, we cover a lot of other things. In particular, if you were to take, pursue the certification, you are being asked, you're being tested on what PMI believes and what PMI says is the way to do things. Some of those elements might not make 100% sense with how you do it in real life or what you would like to do, but always keep that in mind. It doesn't mean one is good and the other one is bad. It just means that you're being tested on, quite honestly, that particular body of knowledge. Uh, the test is multiple choice, so you're not going to be writing essays, you're not going to be filling the blanks or anything along those lines, <clears throat> and it does take a fair amount of effort. The questions are not easy. The questions are meant to kind of make you say, hmm, it could be A, it could be C, it could be B. I'm pretty sure it's not D, but I'm not sure about the other three. And that's totally fine. So don't be discouraged if when you look at it and you say, oh my goodness, that's a lot of questions or wow, these test questions are really hard. The preparation that we provide you will enable you to be successful in that. Great, thanks. So at this point, um, before we move on to q and I do want to do one last quick poll just to kind of get some feedback from you folks about whether you found this session helpful. We're always improving it and we want to learn more about what you're looking for. Um, so take a second, just to ask you guys to give us a little feedback on the information session, and then we're going to do a Q&A and Tony and Kathy are going to stay on for that and really help answer any questions you might have. Um, about the program, things that I didn't cover or that were unclear, because I realize we're very close to it. We do it all the time. But for those of you who are returning to school for the first time in a long time, this may be new to you. So Bridget's going to go ahead and put up the final poll. There we go. Just a few quick questions just to see if this was something you found beneficial and what more we can do to try to get you the information you need to decide whether the program's right for you. I'll just give everyone a second to do that. leave that open. So some of you haven't finished can go ahead and finish, but I don't want to take away from people who have been holding their questions. So go ahead and use the Q&A box to enter any questions you have um, and we'll do our best to answer them. I also want to let people know that we're here. So if you don't think of a question right now, that's okay. I've put Kathy's information back up on the screen. You're going to always reach out to her. Um, we also are going to be posting a copy of this recording and sending you an email as a follow-up because um, you're going to get a discount. So you get a $100 discount just for attending today's webinar. I do want to point out um, the discounts can't be stacked. So if you do the fast track, that has its own discount and you're going to want to pick whatever discount is the best value, whether it's PMI discount, fast track, info session. But you will get a follow-up email from us and you'll be able to go back and look at the recording. And it'll be posted on our website. So you can also let friends or colleagues know that it's available if they couldn't make it today. So, oh, here we go. Okay. So some people want to know, you know, what's the best time to start the program? They're thinking traditional school. Do I need to wait till September? Absolutely not. Because we serve professional adult learners, we have entry points at every single season. So you can start this summer if that's better for you. Maybe you want to start this summer and then take the fall off because that's a busy season for you at work or with your family. Um, you're also welcome to just come in September. The only thing I would say is if you're interested in doing the program very quickly, like through the fast track, entering in the summer 
it's going to take you um, nine months, or I'm sorry, it's going to take you 12 months, but the advantage is that there's two terms where you only have to take one class. So it's a little bit longer, but not quite as intensive. If you enter in the spring or the fall, you get to finish in nine months, which is the fastest you can do the program. It's two, two, and two, just three quarters, but you are doing a double load every single time. So you really want to think long and hard about whether that double load is feasible, because if you start the fast track and it becomes too much and you have to drop out, you it, it's going to be very awkward. You're going to have to redesign your course plan. There may be some fees and penalties. So really, and that's something Kathy can help talk to you about. You really want to just be thoughtful about how you start the program. Okay, so someone has a very good question. Um, are we going to be learning any project management software, such as Microsoft Project, during the course of the program? We don't specifically include any, any specific software because we realize there's so many options out there. And you know, this is not a software class. Some of the instructors do allude to the different tools that are out there and encourage people to become versed in them, but we don't cover that. Tony, anything you want to add about um, the different project management software tools? Yes, yeah, so two quick, two quick things. The first one, as Michelle mentioned, we don't necessarily subscribe to, to one or the others. And the reason why is specifically with Microsoft Project, it's, um, it is not a particular piece of software that is common within a lot of companies. There might be one or two people who have Microsoft Project, but then nobody else does. And as a result, I have found a lot of projects in my career that tend to be over complex because folks are using Microsoft Project, but when it actually comes to disseminating the information, nobody else can access that file. So then they export to Excel and it doesn't quite have the same in information limitation. More than that though, we are seeing a lot of new tools and new solutions that are web-based and are nowhere near as expensive. I do provide some information about them in my class and the foundations class. However, as Michelle mentioned, it is not something that we, um, we necessarily go into too much detail. It might be something that we consider in the future. And um, certainly there are ways to, to manage the case study in a, in a simpler way. But if that is something that there's particular interest, we would always monitor to see how it's moving along. Mm -hmm. In every course, there's going to be an evaluation, and we always ask for your input and feedback. How can we make the course better? What parts weren't clear or didn't cover what you needed to know? And we're always tweaking. In fact, Tony just did a major overhaul of the class last year because he was hearing from students and from PMI about things that are changing. Um, someone's asked about how if they're going to get any guidance on how to report their hours to PMI when they're ready to sit for the PMP exam. I know that PMI has very specific ways they want to report that, but Tony, anything that you want to add about someone who, it, when they're preparing to sit for the exam and they're reporting their hours, any experience you have from having done it yourself? Yeah, so two things there. The first one is typically for students who are taking the risk class, and as Michelle mentioned, that tends to be the last one in, in the link. It need not be, but because of the way it's structured, it tends to be the last one the students are taking. I give them the offer that if, if they are looking to apply and they have any questions with the application that I'd be more than willing to chat. Keeping in mind that my application was many, many years ago, but nevertheless, I keep in the loop of how it's progressing. There's two things for which you'll need to present hours or submit the information to the hours. One is the educational hours, which this class serves and this certificate serves. And because we are a qualified education provider, that is a relatively seamless process. The application is now online and you say, well, I took this class with UC Davis and it, PMI immediately knows, ah, yes, which this class that you're talking about, this certificate. The second one though, is your professional experience hours. And for that, there's most important thing to keep in mind is that PMI is not looking for you to have led the project. They're, they're not looking for that. They're looking for your project management experience. That is how many hours, how many projects, what kind of roles you had in projects. So for instance, let's assume that you work 2000 hours a year. So that is 50 weeks, you take two weeks of vacation and you work 40 hours a week. If you were to say, well, in this particular year, I worked 8,000 hours because I was working on four projects, PMI is gonna say, mm, wait a second, there aren't that many hours in, in a year. 
what PMI would be looking for you to say is, uh, hey, I worked 150 hours in this project. I worked a thousand hours in this other project. By the way, the projects don't need to be relegated to one year. They could span multiple years. And they're gonna ask you, well, what kind of task did you do? Where you focus more on perhaps the beginning of the project, the end of the project, the execution of the project, were you looking more at things that are related to the budget or were you looking at things like schedule or a little bit of everything? So they, they don't just give you a blank piece of paper and say, write everything you want. They kind of guide you as to what they're looking for. And they seek a little bit more information as to the projects, what, what kind of task you perform. I want to take a moment because I've been remiss in introducing Kathy. So I want to turn over to Kathy for a bit because she talks to students every day who are interested in this program. Kathy, what kind of questions and concerns do you hear from students and what would you like to add um, to help give them an overview? Yeah. Hi. Thanks for everyone to attending the info session. So uh, actually for most of the students, uh, we do have, I do have a lot of questions from the student concerning about the time and commitment, how to manage your time. And then that is the key point that I would like to invite you to schedule time with me so we can discuss about your background, your situation. So I can give you more helpful advice on your situation to figure out how to, if, if you fit in the own pace class, or you fit in the fast track class. So that is very important as for the adult learner. I know many people have already been thinking about it, continue their education for quite a while, but uh, there is no, never to be late. It's right time to enroll and to take the class. Great, I'm just replying to a few questions that are coming through. Um, so people are asking a little bit more about the PMP exam. And um, I guess what I would say is I really encourage you to check out their website and reach out to them because I don't want to misspeak for anything because it's their requirements. I know our program meets the education requirements to sit for the exam, but I don't know if they have a time limit. You know, if you took our program 10 years ago, can you still count it? That's really something you'll want to make sure to confirm with PMI. Michelle, just, just on that one, <clears throat> I, I want to make sure we understand the spirit of the question. So if the spirit of the question is, um, let's say that you take this class and you begin in the summer. So let's say June <clears throat> and you pursue the certificate and it takes you, say, a year. Yeah. When you submit the application to PMI for the certification, are they going to say, no, I'm only going to count. We're only interested in the the professional education that you had during the time that you did the education? The answer is no. Oh, right. PMI looks at a specific time period. Off the top of my head, I want to say five years. I might be wrong. But they, they look at that time period when determining whether you meet their minimum threshold of hours. Um, yeah. Okay. And we also had another question about more about software used in the program. And I just want to reassure everyone, um, you are going to be doing some written assignments. And sometimes they involve a spreadsheet. Sometimes they involve, um, I wouldn't call it even an essay. It's more like short answer and response. But it's nothing that couldn't be done in very simple Word or Excel or Google Docs or Sheets. Um, we really try to keep it simple. It's not a computer class. We really just need you to, can, even if you were having trouble and you uploaded a PDF. I mean, we prefer to have the others because we want to edit them. But um, really, we just want to hear what you have to say. Um, Tony, anything you want to add to that? Any challenges people sometimes have in submitting assignments? Or is it pretty straightforward? I would say it's pretty straightforward. There's, there's a variety of things that are built into Canvas. So for instance, uh, or a forum discussion. Yeah. These are all things that the Canvas application itself has a native method of doing. Now, there are also other assignments in which I'll say, for example, write a one page paper determining which path you would take. And for those, I say you can upload Word, you can upload a PDF, you can order, a um, you can upload a, a text. There are assignments for which we provide you a template. And that template mm -hmm. might be Word, that template might be Excel, depending on what we're asking you to do. And occasionally, we do have assignments in which we ask for diagrams. And for that, we always say, hey, in, in an ideal world, 
the easiest method for this is Microsoft Visio. Again, an expensive piece of software. There are many free um, alternatives to it, but the diagrams we're looking for, they can be easily done within Word, within PowerPoint, their Google counterparts, their Apple counterparts, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I know when I the program, I remember I, I didn't have any of those additional software. So I had to do like a, um, you know, some flow charts and stuff. And I was able to do them just in just jury rigging and work. So yeah, don't stress yeah. about that part. That really isn't, um, we really, we're all about the content and, and not, you know, about the delivery. Yep. And this program doesn't have any formal presentation. Some of our courses do. This one doesn't because it is asynchronous. So, um, you know, even if you had to do something, um, in, in a pitch or whatever, it wouldn't be an elaborate PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. Before we wrap up, Kathy, any other questions that you tend to get common questions that may help this group? Yeah, I'd like, like to see uh, that uh, if, uh, especially for the career changer, mm -hmm. I really encourage you to schedule a meeting with me so we can figure out about your background and to see how to help you to get into the new career with the project management. So that is what our uh, goal for the continuing education. And also I will help you with the, the course plan as well. If you are not available to start right away and then we can do the course plan based on your own schedule, discuss about your schedule. Because uh, for this program is a online program that gave a lot of our flexibility. And then how to do the work-life balance and the plus add on the study, I will help you with that as well. Yeah, and Kathy touches upon something I mentioned earlier, which is again, if I can send any message to anyone considering taking on the program, do not worry about you know your experience or how long you've been out of school. Mm. High, high majority of people are perfectly capable of doing the work in the program. It's about time management and actually doing the work. Yeah, the, just get your shoes wet. Exactly, it, it just diving in. And not one thing I would say about this program as well is don't be afraid to submit something and see how it works. When I took the course with Tony, um, everything was due Sunday night. And he was wonderful in that he said, if you get it to me by Friday, mm -hmm. I will give you feedback and let you rewrite it. Because I had never done this before when I took the program and there were certain assignments. I was like, I have no idea if I'm doing this right. And because you're not in a classroom where you can bounce ideas off your classmates, you feel a little bit like you're flying blind. And it was wonderful that I could send it to him on Friday night and say, okay, this is my first shot. Am I on the right track? And he would write back and say, yeah, you're on the right track, but you need to, you need to flesh it out a little bit. Or no, I think you're looking at this wrong. Read the question, you know, read the assignment again and think about the case study. So I really want to reassure people there, this is a very fluid profession. There is not, it's not black and white. There is not one answer to every assignment. There are many ways of looking at it. And don't be afraid to just submit something and say to the instructor, hey, if I send it in early, you know, can I get some feedback? Or, hey, I sent that in to you. And now after hearing the next lecture, I realize I don't think I understood it. Can I rewrite it? And, and they really, this is a program about competency. They want you mm -hmm. to get it right. This is not a gotcha. So I really think that mindset will help. Um, it looks like we don't have any other questions. I want to respect everyone's time. I did want to just move on to next steps. You can enroll online, directly online, and just pay by credit card, or you can enroll by phone, especially if you're um, doing a purchase <clears throat> order or you know have another way that you need to make payment. I encourage you to give a call. Uh, summer courses begin June 27th. Enrollments will be allowed till around the 30th. And I highly encourage everyone to reach out to Kathy and just make sure you know what you're getting into and, and that you're um, doing it what suits you. Our goal is for you to be successful. It does, it does us no good if you start and you misunderstood or it wasn't the right time for you. We really want you to be successful and do the path and the way that's going to work for you. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks for our, our panelists and thanks for everyone who attended. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in our classes. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank right. you. Bye, everyone. Bye.